Yeah, baby! <laughs> yeah. I'm sometimes asked if I'm related to Mike Myers, and, well, of course I am. But then again, so are you. Like, maybe you have four first cousins, maybe a few more, maybe a few less, but how many fifth cousins do you have? Well, for someone in the UK, it may be normal to have roughly around 200 fifth cousins, and perhaps around 600,000 tenth cousins. Think about that next time you're swiping on Tinder. Some years ago, a group of scientists wrote a computer program to simulate the migration and breeding of humans across the world, and it was published in Nature. I don't mean, like, in a forest, I mean the journal. According to them, no matter the languages we speak or the colour of our skin, we share ancestors who planted rice on the banks of the Yangtze, who first domesticated horses on the steppes of the Ukraine, who hunted giant sloths in the forests of North and South America, and who laboured to build the Great Pyramid of Khufu. They also said, while we may not all be brothers, the model suggests we are all hundredth cousins or so. Speaking of cousins, another one of your cousins is this guy. If we go far back enough in your family tree, there will be animals there who are ancestors of both you and him. And while there are many differences between humans and lobsters, there are also many similarities. One of the people who have spoken about this is, perhaps surprisingly, Jordan Peterson. When, when a lobster wins, he flexes and gets bigger, so he looks bigger. Because he's a winner, it's like he's advertising that. And the biological, the neurochemical system that makes him flex is serotonergic. And you think, well, who cares? What the hell does that mean? I'll tell you what it means, it's the same chemical that's affected by antidepressants in human beings. And so, like, if you're depressed, you're a defeated lobster. Like, you're, you're like this. I'm small, I'm not, you know, things are dangerous, I don't want to fight. You give someone an antidepressant, it's like up, they stretch, and then they're ready to, like, take on the world again. Well, if you give lobsters who just got defeated in a fight serotonin, then they stretch out and they'll fight again. And that's, like, we separated from those creatures on the evolutionary timescale somewhere between 350 and 600 million years ago, and the damn neurochemistry is the same! I have my disagreements with Peterson. I even made a video about some of those disagreements. But I share his fascination for lobsters. We don't speak enough about the similarities between lobsters and humans. One similarity is, like lobsters, I have this hard outer shell. Or I, f I find it hard to talk about my emotions, and... On the inside, I'm just lovable and I'm gooey and One similarity between humans and lobsters is that we both avoid extreme heat. Humans avoid extreme heat because we've evolved to find it unbearably painful. And perhaps that's how it works for lobsters as well. I mean, after all, why would evolution evolve a totally different mechanism for lobsters? Lobsters belong to a group of crustaceans called decapods. Now, other examples of decapods include crayfish, crabs, and shrimps. Whether these animals suffer has been studied for some time now, and on Wikipedia they write as follows. Crustaceans fulfill several criteria proposed as indicating that non-human animals may experience pain. These fulfilled criteria include a suitable nervous system and sensory receptors, opioid receptors, and reduced responses to noxious stimuli when given analgesics and local anaesthetics. Physiological changes to noxious stimuli, displaying protective motor reactions, exhibiting avoidance learning, and making trade-offs between noxious stimulus avoidance and other motivational requirements. Invertebrates, endogenous opioids are neurochemicals that moderate pain by interacting with opioid receptors. Opioid peptides and opioid receptors occur naturally in crustaceans, and although it was concluded in 2005 that at present no certain conclusion can be drawn, more recent considerations suggest their presence, along with related physiological and behavioural responses, as indicating that crustaceans may experience pain. Opioids may moderate pain in crustaceans in a similar way to that in vertebrates. One expert who has been interviewed is Robert Elwood, who has studied this issue for a decade. According to him, there are no easy answers, but he thinks it's very likely that lobsters and other crustaceans can feel pain. In his research, Elwood performed a series of experiments to determine whether crustaceans can in fact feel pain, or whether they're just reacting to certain actions. During one experiment, a light acid was placed on the antenna of a prawn, and the prawn repeatedly rubbed the area for a long time. In another study where he participated, they gave electric shocks to the shells of hermit crabs. Only crabs that were given shocks left their shells, but if they liked their shells better, they were less likely to leave them due to the electric shocks, which indicates motivational trade-offs. Research also shows that these animals remember pain. For example, they might avoid areas where they've experienced pain in the past. So they remember pain, and they make motivational trade-offs, both of which suggest that they aren't just exhibiting simple reflexes. Imagine a group of aliens discussing whether humans might be conscious. Humans are a fraction of the size we are, they might say. Such small creatures can't be conscious. 
Or perhaps they might say, the components in our neural circuitry that experience suffering are not found in humans. So since they don't have a mechanism for this that is organised exactly like ours, let's just conclude that they don't have a mechanism for suffering at all. Humans have a history of being way too quick to conclude that other groups of beings aren't conscious. A few hundred years ago, it was common to believe that only humans were conscious and all other animals were complex but unfeeling machines. And although we have improved since then, we still have a reckless attitude towards animal consciousness. Like imagine if lobsters had a 10% chance of being capable of experiencing intense suffering. Well then we should ask ourselves, what if it was me? How would I feel if I had a 10% chance of experiencing torture? And I don't really think the chance is 10%. To me, it looks like lobsters probably are conscious and probably do suffer. And I think the same about crabs and crayfish and shrimps. Now to get an impression of what is standard practice for these animals today, let's take a look at this popular video from 2019. First of all, in Minnesota, we call them crayfish. Right. Is that okay? No. Okay. Because we laugh at that. Uh, you're wrong, and they're called crayfish. But I guess reasonable people can disagree. It's less important than the rest of this video anyway. Down here we loosen up, we like to party, we like to have a good time. We are very nice to our neighbours, everybody's our friend. So, part of me believes him. Like, I get the vibe that he probably is a nice guy. But there also seems to be an important exception to him being everybody's friend. Well, actually, at least 10,000 exceptions. Because the title of this video is Boiling 10,000 Crawfish. The real star of any throwdown are the crawfish. Oh my god, look at this! It's like a thousand crayfish. It looks like a thousand little cockroaches running around. If they look like cockroaches, then that should make you worried about making them suffer. Cockroaches produce natural opiates. They can die from stress, even without injury. They form complex social relations with other cockroaches and can be damaged by social isolation. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna purge them. We're gonna run a lot of water on these crawfish, wash the mud off of them so they don't have a muddy taste. And this water kind of brings them back to life, yeah. really gets them hopping. Somehow, through science, a miracle, or otherwise, all these crawfish are going in this pot at one time, plunging into a mix of potatoes, onion, garlic, mushrooms, lemons, sausage, and plenty of Louisiana crawfish boil seasoning. All right, put it up here. Let's oh. give him a little loving. Oh, yes! There's so many! We're gonna put more in there. Oh, yeah. This thing is packed! Okay, now we're gonna try to fit some of these in. Oh, jeez. Look at this. It's completely full. We can do it. We can do it. We can all get right, more we got in. It. Notice the choice of music. This video has 184,000 likes and a mostly positive comment section, indicating that people see this as innocent fun. The people who liked this video, I'm guessing if they saw videos from the Chinese countryside of dogs being bored alive, with this same kind of music being played in the background, well they wouldn't see that as okay. And I guess that shows that we have made some moral progress, but obviously not enough. So that's one crayfish, and you have roughly 10,000 in the pot. The question people should ask themselves is this. What if it was me? What if I was to experience being boiled in the way that it feels to a crayfish? Look, even if you think crayfish probably don't suffer, it would be a big risk to switch places with one crayfish being boiled. Because what if you're wrong? Now imagine switching places with 10,000 crayfish, living through the experience of each one of them as they're boiled. Mm. Oh. Mm. What do you think? Everything is right with the world right now. Mm. Far from everything is right in the world right now, and that is putting it mildly. But when it comes to the boiling of these animals, we do at least see some promising developments taking place. This is from an article that was published a few days ago. The UK Animal Sentience Bill currently only applies to vertebrate animals, animals with a backbone. However, Crustacean Compassion, whose supporters include Chris Packham, Bill Bailey, the RSPCA, and the British Veterinary Association, argue that the bill does not go far enough. Scientific evidence shows that decapod crustaceans, a group which includes crabs and lobsters, can feel pain and suffer and should be included in animal welfare legislation. The amendment also requests that cephalopods, which includes octopus and squid, are also protected by the bill. In 2020, in response to pressure from animal welfare campaigners, the government commissioned an independent scientific review of the evidence for the sentience of decapod crustaceans and cephalopod mollusks. However, they have given no release date for the report despite repeated parliamentary and House of Lords requests. 
Whilst other countries such as Switzerland, Norway and New Zealand include decapod crustaceans in their animal welfare laws, decapods are not currently included in the definition of animal under most of the UK's animal welfare legislation. Crustacean Compassion points out that this means that they can be routinely treated as if they were no more sentient than a vegetable. Decapod crustaceans are frequently boiled or dismembered alive, and research shows that a brown crab may take up to three minutes to die in boiling water. Electrical stunning before slaughter, they argue, is currently the most humane method for dispatching the animals. Last year, a fishmonger came under fire for using Amazon to deliver live lobsters through the ordinary post, and a London supermarket was criticised in 2015 for selling crabs shrink-wrapped while still alive. It's phrased as if whether it's moral to boil these animals alive is some complex issue that requires lots of studies and long reports, but the information required to conclude that boiling these animals alive is wrong well, we've had that information for thousands of years. We see that they are animals like us. And like us, they seem to have strong preferences, such as trying to escape when they are being boiled, much like we would do if we were experiencing pain. Now, we can't technically conclude from this that they are suffering when they're boiled alive, but it's enough to conclude that the risk is there, that there is at least a considerable chance that boiling them alive causes great amounts of terrible suffering. Imagine if it was us. Imagine that some other animal species had all the power, and imagine that they didn't know whether or not humans could suffer. Would we want them to assume that humans can't suffer until it's proven that we can, and to literally boil us alive in the meantime? Like I've said in other videos, there is no country that isn't barbaric in the way it treats animals, but some countries are less barbaric than others. I really hope we get legislation in the UK that bans the live boiling of crabs, crayfish, shrimps and lobsters. But even if that happens, it will still be allowed to boil these animals alive in most countries even in most Western countries. To boil these animals alive is not the exception, it's standard practice. So we certainly have a long way to go. Maybe you won't help in this cause with the same urgency as a lobster trying to escape a boiling pot. I don't think any human does. But there are some simple things you can do to help. One thing you can do is to not eat these animals. Another thing you can do is to share this video. You can also visit crustaceancompassion.org.uk there, you can sign petitions, subscribe for updates, and donate. And if you're from the UK, there is functionality there for sending an email to your local MP. Perhaps you could craft a personal message which includes a link to this video. Before I end the video, I want to quickly announce the Patreon of the Month Award, which for July goes to Steve Robinson. Steve, I think it's been around two years or so since we last saw each other, um, but you've been supporting me on Patreon for around that time. So thanks so much uh, for all of your support. It's very kind and generous of you, and I hope you're doing really well. Now, if you take a look at the Animal Riots clothing website, I'll put a link in the description box of this video. Take a look. I think we've got like four items. <laughs> you can choose anything you want off there. Um, and then send me a message on, on Patreon or, or whatever, and I'll ship it out to you. A big thank you to everyone who supports the channel via Patreon and by other means. It really means a lot to me, and it really makes a difference. I'll be at Vegan Camp Out next month. I'm not giving a talk or anything, but I'm just going to, to enjoy myself, really, so perhaps I get a chance to, to thank a few of you in person. If you're someone who finds my content valuable, please do consider supporting me on Patreon. As well as the Patreon of the Month Award, you also get early access to videos, and you have a, a direct way of messaging me with any video ideas or, or questions you may have. With that said, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you very soon with another video.